Sometimes you have data that should be associated with another data. Let's say you have a set of students that need to be graded and you want to store this information in some form of a file or in some form of a data structure. You would use uh, so-called associative containers for this because you want to associate a set of uh, values on one side with a set of values on the other side. And these are exactly the containers that we're going to be covering today. So whenever we talk about associative containers, we're talking about associating a certain set of one values to a certain set of other values. And we generally call the first set of values the keys and the second set of values, well, the values. And because we need this form of a mapping from one to another, the uh, type that we use for that in C++ is called uh, standard map or std map. In order to use the standard map container, you need to include the header map. Usually, a uh, standard map is implemented as a tree and a red-black tree at that. But this is not a must. The standard doesn't really require it to be implemented as a tree, but in most of the implementations, it is implemented this way. Which also means that um, to access the elements um, takes logarithmic time. The reason for this is because everything is stored in a tree. So uh, in order to find an element that you're looking for, you start at the top and then you branch out, branch out, branch out, and you find your element. And the same happens when you add elements or remove elements from the map. The map type itself takes uh, two template arguments or types that it, that it uses. The first type is the key type and the second type is the value type. So for example, what you see on the screen right now is uh, you see a map that has a key of uh, the character type and the value of the double type. And below that you see a map that takes an integer as the key and a float uh, as a value type. Uh, generally speaking, every type can be a key type for the map and definitely any type can be a value type for the map. The only requirement on the key type for the map is that it has an operator less than defined for it. We already talked about the comparison operators when we talked about the fundamental types before. You can also specify a different uh, way to store your data if you, for example, pass in the uh, standard greater or std greater into the third element of your, uh, of your map. That will be used as the comparison operator and then basically the map will use the greater than operator. Everything else will work exactly the same. It will just basically influence how the data is stored uh, on the disk. But you can use that too. Now, to create a map, you need to declare a variable of type map. You need to provide these types, and then you can provide the values. And if you do like all of this content, then please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about it. Thanks. The values that you're providing are actually in the form of pairs. So if you look at the top line on the slide now, you will basically see that we provide a, a, a pair of 42 and uh, 42, 42 double. Um, and that would be a pair that would be stored uh, as the only element of our map. And we could pass uh, many more elements there if we would like to. In C++ 17 and above, you can, of course, omit the types but you would have to explicitly specify that uh, you are given a pair to it. And then in the pair, you can of course omit the types again because the compiler can derive those. Uh, so you can uh, basically have the 42 and 42, 42 again there. And uh, because now the compiler can figure out the types of the pair, it can also figure out the types of the, of the resulting map. So you don't need to provide the types there. Generally speaking, in my own preference, in my own code, I mostly provide the types for my map whenever I use a map, but it is a bit of a personal preference. I would probably suggest you do the same, at least for the start. It kind of helps you familiarize yourself with the types. Okay, so that is if you want to create a map from the data that you already have. But if you want to add the data after you've created a map, you can easily do that. You just have to use the function in place. Remember before in the sequence containers we used the in place back because we wanted to add something to the end of our container. Here we would like to just add it somewhere and let the map figure out where to put it. And when we use in place we provide uh, a key and uh, a value and it will construct a pair for us and put it uh, into, um, into its storage the way it wants to store the data. 
Once we have the data in our container, we can get this data, otherwise it would be a pretty useless container, and we can get the data by again employing the function at. Um, before we would provide in the sequence containers, we would uh, provide the index uh, into this function at. Here we provide the key because we store our values by the key. And it will give us back um, a reference or a const reference, depending on if uh, the actual map variable is a const um, variable or not. We can also add the elements in a different way. We can use the square brackets. And this is a little bit of a, um, of a caveat of a map. A lot of people who start with C++ and just start working with map overuse this operator, uh, which causes a lot of errors. It's one of the most uh, common errors that I've seen beginners make. So when you use the square brackets operator on the map, and let's say uh, you pass a key that does not exist in the map, what will it do? You would maybe expect that it will throw an error at you or something like that, but no, it will create a new element there. So only use it if you want to modify your map, if you want to add a new value, you can then use the square brackets, put a key in and then set uh, the value. It's exactly the same as using the in place with the same key and value. But it won't work on a const variable. So if you create a const map variable, then uh, square brackets will not work on it because again, they need to modify the data. So if you have a const, uh, map um, and you should always use const when you don't need to modify your data, then always use add. You can of course check if uh, a certain key is present in your map uh, because you don't know this a priori and I think the easiest way to do it with the map is to just use uh, the function count. Uh, you can give a key into this function count and if it returns one, the key exists there and if it returns a zero, well then the key does not exist there. There is also a function find on the map, but we won't talk about this right now because we need to talk about iterators, which we will a little bit later, and then we will return to this and talk about this. You can use uh, the functions that you've already seen in the sequence containers like size, empty, or, um, or clear on the map, which uh, do exactly the same things as they did before. They return the size, they check if the map is empty, and they can clear all the elements by basically removing everything that the map stores. Finally, you can erase any, any element from your map, and for that you just call the function erase, and you pass the key into this function erase. Now, with all of this baggage in mind, let's uh, maybe look at example. Uh, let's just walk through this example from top to bottom. We have to, uh, we include iostream because we want to use the streams. Again, if you want a refresher on what are streams, then feel free to click the link um, above and in the description. Uh, so we then uh, use a couple of usings. Uh, if you don't know what a using is, then of course you can go and watch the video on namespaces and usings. Um, that also will be helpful for this example. And then we have uh, a main function that you should already be familiar with. In this main function, we create a const map of uh, uh, so we pass integer as the key type and double as the value type, and we initialize it with uh, two values. So we have the key 42 and the key 23, defining it with some values attached to them. We then just show, well, that the map is not empty, it should print a zero. Um, if, uh, we should then print the size of this map, which should print two. And we would then like to print an element that we uh, get by asking the map to give us an element with the key 42. That's basically how you work with a constant map. Now we create another map, which is the mutable map. So the one that we will be able to change. And on that one, we will be able to use the square bracket operator and we create a new element there with a new key. And that will uh, change the, the value and add the value into, into the map. Then again, we can, of course, get the element uh, from this map by this new key. We can even change its value uh, because the at function returns us a reference to this element. So we can, of course, uh, make some changes to it. If this confuses you, then do go back and watch the video where I start talking about the references. It's in the fundamental types uh, video. I will also link it somewhere on the screen. Finally, we can erase the element that we've just added and then print the size to just make sure that it's not there. I do urge you to just copy over this example, um, the link to the copyable code uh, and the transcript of these slides will be as usual in the description of this video, but copy this code into your editor, play around with this code, 
build it, run it, try to change it, try to break it. Um, in the end of the day, this is how you get the experience. You have to code, you have to actually run the code, and you have to fail a lot in order to learn a lot. So go on and do that now. This is basically everything that you need to know about the standard map, uh, or at least most of the things that you need to know. Now let's talk about the unordered map. It's very similar to the map, it's just under the hood, it's implemented in a different way. If the map is usually implemented as a tree, the unordered map is implemented as a hash table. Basically, for each value, you compute a hash of this value, and then uh, that is put in, in some form of a table. Which means that the access to the elements and to add elements uh, to this type of, uh, of unordered map is generally quicker. It's uh, the O of 1 operation or a constant time operation, but it requires to compute a hash value for every value that you have. So if you really care about performance, then if you have a small amount of data, then probably use standard map. If you have larger amounts of data, then probably use unordered map. But then again, uh, the best advice that I can give is to measure, measure, measure. If you want to run things fast, you need to measure things to make sure that you're not doing the wrong thing. We will be talking about how to measure your code sometime soon in the future. But other than that, uh, the unordered map has exactly the same interface as the map. So you can do all the same things that we did before. And actually what I urge you to do is to take the example with the map that we did in the previous slide and uh, actually run it with unordered map and see that it works exactly the same. One final thing that you can do with the maps that we didn't discuss yet, and it's actually a pretty new thing too, uh, you can merge maps. It has been only added in C++17, but basically it does exactly what the name suggests. It takes one map and merges it with the second one. That means that it takes all the values from the second one that do not exist in the first one and puts them into the first one. It does not touch the values from the second uh, map that already exist in the first one. It also works for both the standard map and the standard hash map, which you can of course see if you try these examples on your own. Additional two containers that are usually associated with associative containers, no pun intended, uh, are the standard set and standard unordered set. They are kind of very similar to the maps that we just discussed before, but they don't have the value type. Or actually, the value type is the key type for them. And they're generally used to maintain a set of unique values. So if you want to make sure that your ints are always unique and never repeat themselves, you can just always throw them into a standard set container and they will never repeat themselves there. If the particular int is already in the container, it won't be duplicated in there. The interfaces are analogous to the ones uh, that we've seen in the map, and uh, I will not cover them here on the slides. What I urge you to do, though, is to play around with an example and go to cppreference.com and read about set and try to follow the examples provided there and uh, to maybe, uh, you know, once you understand how that thing works, try to adapt them and uh, maybe play with a, a couple of small examples that uh, you might find interesting. In the end of the day, do get used to using cppreference.com. That's one of the best resources we have for C++ and you will have to refer to that whenever you work with any STL containers or functions, whenever you forget something. Every day that I code in C++, there is some small detail that I forgot or I'm not sure how it is implemented in a standard, I would go to cppreference.com as my first stop. Finally, I want to finish on one caveat. Uh, with all of these types, the map, the unordered map, the set, and the unordered set, do not use floating point numbers as your key type. And well, for set and unordered set, just don't put floats in there. The reason for this is because when you do operations on floating point numbers, because of the way they're represented in memory and implemented, they can lose precision. That means that if, uh, if we look at this example and I take uh, a certain number, let's say 42.42, .42, floating point number, and uh, I add a big number to it, and then I just subtract the same big number from it, the value that I'm storing in my variable actually changes, which now can lead to this very weird situation where I expect something to be in my, uh, in my map, but it's not there. So if you run this example, you will run into an error 
uh, and I urge you to do it again. So do not be afraid to run into errors. You will have to get used to seeing errors on the screen and never use uh, floating point numbers as uh, the keys to your map or never put them into the set. And on this, this is actually everything that you need to know about the associative containers. Um, and uh, we can move on from here. Thanks for your attention and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.